I'm Tom, and this is my follow-up video to the first impressions one uh, on the Formlabs sample part, the Twisted Rook. So I started getting questions about whether or not the resin that Formlabs uses is really as strong as I thought it was, so I decided to do a semi-scientific test on the strength of a couple different typical 3D printing materials. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at the quality that you get with the different processes. And first up, of course, the Formlabs part that is a resin printed SLA part that has great quality, great detailed reproduction and overall just looks awesome. Next up, a part printed from ABS on my Mendel 90. This is just cheap Chinese no-name ABS basically. And you can see right away that the font didn't turn out as great, neither did the Formlabs logo. And I suppose that it is simply because Slicer didn't want to slice it. The text on top, however, did somewhat come out and it, I mean it's, it's readable if you try to. The center helix is there but it doesn't look spectacular and as the other FFF prints that I'm going to show, um, these were all printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height and that of course means that overhangs like the one on the bottom don't turn out that great. The next part was printed from PLA on the Printabot Simple Metal and because I sliced it with Cura instead of Slicer, the font on the side turned out much better but the font on the top is completely not there. Again, 0.2 millimeter layers, um, the center helix is there and it doesn't look that bad. And overall I do like the print quality on this part. Next up, a part printed from Tallman Bridge, which is a easy to print nylon copolymer and that print turned out pretty nicely as well. It's got a semi-glossy surface finish but it's a bit stringier than the PLA or ABS simply because the nylon is a softer filament. The center helix is all there and looking pretty sharp. And what's really amazing about nylon is how well it handles overhangs. The bottom of this part has absolutely no strings. I mean, you can see where the nozzle touched a bit, but other than that, this looks as close to perfect as it's going to get. And compared to the Formlabs parts, this looks actually almost quite as nice. The PLA part looks pretty okay, it has a couple of strings where you can see the filament sagging, but other than that it's pretty good. The ABS part on the other hand looks pretty horrible. Um, I don't know what happened there. So the first way of torturing these parts that I was going to do was trying to break all these Merlins by hand. Um, and I know this is a fairly subjective test, but um, I tried to keep this as comparable as possible. So I pushed as hard as I could on each of these, leaving marks in my fingertips. Um, the first subject here is the Formlabs SLA printed part, and I had a pretty hard time breaking these off. In fact, I couldn't manage to do it just by hand. Um, and that was actually pretty painful to do. Um, next up is the PLA part. Again, same procedure, same fingers used, same pressure applied as far as I could judge that. And again, there was not much that I could do to them in any way that I tried pushing them off. And this is directly loading the interlayer bonds. That is what is usually critical about 3D printed parts. Next up, the ABS print. And I know that ABS is usually a bit weaker when it comes to these bonds, and so is this part. Some of the Merlons were pretty hard to break off, and others came right off without any significant force. So again, this is no-name Chinese ABS. This is about the cheapest material that you can print with, so I'm not surprised that it's not that great as far as strength goes. Next up was the part printed from Tallman Bridge and surprisingly the Merlons also came off on this one but they didn't snap off like with the ABS part but they tore off. It's more of a cloth-like tearing instead of them just snapping off. So overall this round goes to the Formlabs SLA part and to the PLA part. The next torture device that I came up with uh, was these two clamps that basically grab onto the top and bottom of this print, which I can then use to try and tear apart the center section. So to do that, one side of the clamp sits on my bench vise and the other side of the clamp is being pulled on by a adjustable load and I simply used a length of spectraline to form two hooks and hook those onto the lower section of the clamp. And this makes sure that I'm 
pulling straight down and not bending or twisting the part in any way. And as a load I simply used a 15 liter paint bucket. So that is 4 US gallons or 33 US pounds in water that I can fill it up with. And I expected each part to fail with this load because the center section of the print has a fairly small cross section. But surprisingly the form lapse part didn't fail until I had filled the bucket all the way to the top and even then it still didn't fail until I filled it up all the way to the top then tried to lift up the bucket and lower it back down. And that apparently was a very small spike but was enough to break the part and that snapped right off. And this is what it looks like after it broke. And it looks like layer delamination isn't really much of a problem for these SLA printed parts. It acts and feels like a part that was cast or injection molded as a whole. So next up I weighed the complete load that was on the part and that was 17.4 kilograms, which is 38 US pounds. Next up was the PLA part and that got strapped into the exact same torture device and loaded and destroyed in the exact same manner. And again, like the form lapse part, this part did not fail until the bucket was full. So again, 17.4 kilograms or 38 pounds. And it didn't fail even when I dropped the bucket back down. So I put my weight into it and that did get it to snap. I'd say I put about 25 to 30 kilograms of my weight onto that before it snapped. Next up is the nylon bridge printed part and that thing was amazingly strong. Not only did it survive the bucket and the bucket drop, but it also survived my weight almost completely, I'd say 40 to 50 kilograms and even then it didn't snap off but tore off like a piece of cloth. The ABS part on the other hand failed pretty miserably and gave in after just 12 kilograms of water in the bucket. So the ABS part is the only part that really failed that round. Um, the nylon part was very impressive but the PLA and the SLA parts delivered very solid performances as well. Next up I tried to crush what was left of these parts. So for that I made sure that I had an even surface to clamp these parts onto and then just chucked them into my bench vise and I had a go at it and compressed them as much as I could. Woo! Shit! And quite honestly I did not expect that. Uh, I'm used to the softer filaments uh, like ABS, PLA, Nylon, NinjaFlex that fail gracefully and stretch a bit before they fail, but that does not seem to be the case for the form lapse part. So needless to say the ABS part was unusable after I crushed it, but at least it didn't explode in my face. It felt like it gradually gave in as I compressed it. Um, much less so the PLA part that basically required a bit of force at the end but didn't really compress much after that. Um, the result is the same as with the ABS part and last but not least the nylon part and again that thing impressed me. It didn't really delaminate at all. It permanently deformed but this is actually the best performance of them. Now is there a clear winner between these four parts? And I honestly don't think there is. Uh, each of these materials has their specific applications. The Formlabs resin printed part for one is very detailed and actually pretty strong but it does not fail gracefully at all. So if you're designing parts that are going to carry any kind of load or tension I would probably choose a different material. Um, the ABS did fail in a couple disciplines, but I'm still going to keep using it for, you know, basic parts that just need to be made cheaply. Now, the Tallman Nylon actually was a very solid performer. Um, it is not as stiff as PLA, ABS or the Formlabs SLA part, but it does have an overall very nice layer bonding strength and the material itself also fails very, very gracefully. Again, it feels more like tearing cloth than breaking plastic. Now, the material that surprised me the most was the very basic printabot PLA, because that stuff is actually pretty strong to boot with. It's also the stiffest material of the bunch. 
and has a very respectable layer bonding strength. So that concludes my semi-scientific material strength test. There is one more thing that I would like to point out to you this week and that is the Tallman Toolbox Kickstarter that is running right now. Tallman has engineered six new 3D printing materials. Some of them are super strong, some of them are super flexible, some of them are even FDA approved and therefore are food safe. So if you want to see more high performance materials in the future, head over to Kickstarter and support the Tallman Toolbox. And as always, thanks for watching.